action. <laughs> How's it going everyone? Coach Javi here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're in the studio and we're going to be doing a little bit more of an educational type video. Today's video is all about grades. Are they really important? Do they really matter? And how much do they matter when you're talking about college recruiting, getting a college scholarship, and just overall being able to play in college? Any level, Division 1, Division 2, Division 3, even NAI. So uh, let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so the big question I get all the time is how important are your grades? So the simple answer is they are extremely important and I have four specific reasons. <laughs> I went like this. I went four, spe four specific reasons. And I have four specific reasons as to why they're as important as maybe your coaches or some of your teachers say. The first one is very simple and it is that depending on the school that you're gonna go to, there is a certain GPA or ACT score or SAT score that is required to even gain admission into the school. So if you can't get admitted into the school, when you apply, you get rejected, then there's no possibility of you even playing at that school. For example, let's take Michigan State University. I'm in Detroit, Michigan, so MSU is a popular school that a lot of kids here are trying to go to and they're one of the better schools in division one soccer they make it to the national tournament the last few years they've gotten pretty far so we're going to use them as an example so for the average msu freshman the gpa is 3.5 to 4.0 their act scores are 23 to 29 and their average sat scores are 1130 to 1310 so there's obviously going to be students who are a little bit on the lower end and students who are a little bit on the higher end but that's the average msu student it is a competitive school it's not impossible to get into but if your grades are on the low end there could be a chance that you could get rejected just because they're going to admit students with higher GPAs or better ACT and SAT scores. MSU for example also takes into account what kind of college prep program you were taking in high school so if you were taking any AP classes or any honors classes and how well you did in those so if you weren't taking any college prep classes or any advanced classes that could be another reason for them to reject your admission into the school. You have to take that into account right off the bat it doesn't matter how bad you want to play for that school or how good you are if you can't even get admitted into the school based on your academics. So the second reason that your grades and your academics are very important is that they also determine what kind of academic scholarships you can get before we even start looking at the athletic scholarships. So when you're talking to these coaches, the first thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna look to the academics and their admissions, and they're gonna try and find out what kind of scholarships you can get without them even having to touch their athletic scholarships. So right from the start, coaches have a very, very limited athletic budget, especially some of the smaller schools in comparison to some of the bigger schools. So, so if they're already very limited, they're gonna try and get you as much money as they can academically and if they can't get you that much money academically it's gonna be harder for them to want to bring you into their program because they're gonna to have to spend a lot more from the athletic scholarship if you can't pay the full tuition and colleges can get very expensive so you're trying to get as much money financially as you possibly can if you have good academics and a good GPA you're gonna qualify for a lot of the academic scholarships if you go on any school's website you can look at what scholarships they have available MSU has all sorts of different kinds of scholarships so for example if you're going to be a physical education major they might have a scholarship that is for physical education majors and they also have scholarships based off of your actual profile so if you're a minority there's oftentimes minority scholarships because they're trying to boost their minority numbers going to those schools so you can go onto their website and you can take a look at all the different kinds of scholarships they offer and they will have some sort of a gpa requirement or some sort of other requirement that you might need to fulfill so if you can get academic money and the coach only needs to pay a little bit out of his athletic scholarship or maybe nothing at all then it becomes a lot easier for them to want to recruit you because they don't have to take any money out of their athletic budget. So for example, Coach Javi, when I went into college, my scholarship was completely academic. My coaches did not have to touch a single penny out of their athletic scholarship, so it made the decision very, very easy. The third reason is you're always going to lose the battle versus someone with better academics. So you have to remember that these coaches, especially the Division One coaches of the big schools, are recruiting all across the world. So out of the hundreds or even thousands of athletes that they're looking to recruit, a lot of them are going to be playing in your position and if they have better grades than you there's a higher chance that the coach is going to recruit them I know a lot of you guys probably think you're really good, that you deserve a scholarship, and you're one of the best soccer players in the area, in the state. You have to remember you're competing against athletes all over the world. So it's gonna be pretty easy to find someone who's just as good as you, if not even better, that have better grades or better academics. So you don't want it to come down to a battle between you and someone else, and you lose because your academics aren't as good as theirs. So let's go back to Michigan State University and their soccer team using them as an example. If you look at their roster page, 10 out of the 18 players on their current roster 
are from Michigan. So you can tell right from that that they're probably looking at mostly players from within the state. So if you're maybe from a different country or you're from a different state, your chances of getting recruited by MSU might already be a little bit less. So out of their entire roster, they only have two international players. Both of them are from Canada. The rest are from the United States. So not only are you competing against players in the academic side of things, but you're also competing with them in the geographic side of things. Where are they getting all their players from? Where do they tend to recruit the most from? Just keep that into account. But like I said, if you can, you're trying to get your academics as high as possible so that if it comes down to both of you, they choose you instead. So the fourth and final reason is that it shows your character and what kind of student athlete you are going to be. If you have a low GPA, it could set off an alarm to coaches that when you get into their program, maybe you're not gonna be trying as hard. And if you couldn't maintain a good GPA in high school, then it's gonna be a lot harder in college when you have a lot more things going on. You're gonna have school full-time, athletics full-time. You're gonna try and balance the social life. You're gonna be trying to balance the whole college experience. And if you couldn't have done that in high school, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to do that in college. So coaches ultimately might not be able to count on you. Also, coaches often get incentives or awards based on their team's performance in the classroom. So they might get a little bit of a bonus if their team has one of the highest GPAs in the entire school, and it looks better when their teams are in better academic standing. So if you have a low GPA going into the school, they might not be able to count on you. And if you do have a low GPA in college, you could lose your eligibility to be playing in the NCAA. So the NCAA has rules as far as what GPA uh, the students must maintain. And if you can't get that GPA, then you're gonna be ineligible and then that's gonna hurt your team ultimately. So according to the NCAA's website, as far as GPA goes, you should have a 1.8 by your sophomore year, a 1.9 by your junior year, and a 2.0 by your senior year. Now these sound like really easy to get or easy to attain GPAs, but if you're one of those people that struggles in the classroom and already has a low GPA in high school, you're gonna find it's a lot harder in college and you're probably going to struggle. And the last thing you want to do for your team is is to lose your eligibility and then you can't play. So I do have a few tips that I wanna share with you guys that might help you in raising your GPA or giving you a better chance of getting recruited by these schools. The first one is make sure you retake your ACT and your SAT until you're happy with the score. If you're looking at a specific college, take a look into their admissions department, like I said, look at what their median ACT or SAT is and then try to obtain a score that's at least that amount or a little bit higher. It's gonna get a little bit expensive if you have to keep retaking them, so make sure you study hard, but a good ACT and a good SAT score will get you pretty far. If you do have a low GPA, especially going into maybe your senior year, don't give up. Getting recruited, getting a scholarship will come down to the smallest little bit of difference in your GPA. So it could be a 0.1 difference in your GPA that's going to allow you to get a scholarship or allow you to get admitted into the school. So if you have a low GPA going into your senior year, for example, make sure you really put in the work to raise it as much as you can before you graduate so you have the highest chance of getting into the school that you wanna get into. Lastly, if your GPA is really, really low and you've completely given up and there's no chance for you to improve it, one thing you can do is instead of going straight to the school that you wanna to go to as far as division one or a big four year state school, you can go to a community college or a JUCO for the first two years, raise up your GPA and then transfer out. I see a lot of players who do that. The positive part of that is that your GPA and all of your academics will reset when you go into those schools. So when you transfer out after your second year in a a JUCO or in a community college, the college that you're gonna transfer into will take the GPA and your academics from those two years as opposed to what you had in high school. So it'll kind of reset and it'll give you a chance to get your GPA up so that you can qualify for more scholarships. The downside to that is that you're probably gonna lose one or two years of eligibility, but it gives you a better chance of getting a good scholarship or getting admitted into the school because your GPA and your ACT will reset. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope uh, you got some information out of it. I hope it's useful for you in your college recruiting process. If you guys have any questions or any topics that you want me to do for future videos, make sure you guys go ahead and comment that down below. That's it for this one. Until next time, and adios, muchachos.